how can you play with these concepts to get where you want to go? I'll give you the example of Chief Justice John Roberts. Chief Justice John Roberts is a conservative. Chief Justice John Roberts is a conservative in the area, and I'll stick in the example of the Fourth Amendment, search and seizure. He's a conservative if you're, if you're trying to get hard evidence against a defendant. But here are the kinds of cases that come to the court now in these search and seizure cases. Roberts was on the court as chief justice when a case came to the court talking about a search of a person who was accused of selling drugs. The police could not figure out how to develop evidence against him. And someone came up with the idea of finding the Jeep Cherokee that he drove owned by his wife and not following it with, with police cars behind his car, not following it with satellite images or drones, but going up to the car, which was parked on a city street, reaching under the back bumper and putting a GPS locator on the car and then tracking the car for almost 30 days and developing about a 2000 page portfolio of where that car had gone. And on the basis of this, they knew where this fellow had bought drugs, where he had sold drugs. They were able to develop their case. This case split the Supreme Court in a strange way because the originalist Scalia looked at it and said, oh, I've got a solution based in the founding era. And the solution is that car is property. And when the police reach inside of the bumper of the car and attach a GPS locator to the bottom of the car, to the chassis of the car, they have violated this fellow's right of privacy. They have trespassed. Well, I saw that and I talked to my class about why have they trespassed? Because it's not inside the car. It's on the bottom of the car. And wait, the car was parked on a public street. And the car has this attached to the outside of it. And at one point in this search, the battery ran out and the police had to go back and find the car parked on the public street. Take the old GPS device off, put a new one on. So if you're truly using trespass, I would have no trouble with agreeing with Scalia that you can't track that driver of that car by pinging his cell phone, which is in his hand, hopefully not when he's driving, looking forward to selling drugs, and tracking himself with the cell phone. That would be too much for me. But I don't quite see why privacy as to going beyond the back of the bumper, going what's called the curtilage of the property beyond the back bumper and attaching that GPS device, why that is a problem. I found myself intrigued with Samuel Alito's opinion. Samuel Alito's opinion said, has nothing to do with the right of privacy. All of the case law talks about the reasonableness of the search the reasonableness of the search. Let's look at what the, what the seriousness of the crime is. Let's look at how intrusive your search is. And let's ask what a reasonable person would say is the proper amount of search capacity of the government to deal with this kind of criminal. What's he actually saying? He's saying, you track this fellow for nearly 30 days. You developed 2,000 pages of information. He was selling drugs. That's a bad offense. But I don't know that I would give you 30 days of tracking this fellow for selling drugs. If he were a terrorist, I might give you more time. So I would look at the nature of the crime, and I would have limits on how intrusive the search could be. And so he disagrees with Scalia saying, I should use those other precedents. I should use the prevailing test. I should use reasonableness. What was curious about this was 
a true originalist. Alito is not. He's historian, history and tradition. Scalia is. But Alito is a history and tradition fellow, a true history and tradition person, would have done corpus linguistics. Why not go back to the early American writings of the news companies, the early American newspapers database? Why not put the word privacy into that database? And why not see what you get? What did privacy mean to the framers at that time? I did it. We have that database at Lafayette. It's very interesting. It's very helpful. I put in the word privacy. I got no responses. I was stunned. No one ever used the word privacy? That can't be. And so I started playing with my search. Like, what have I done wrong with my keyword? How do you misspell privacy? At some point, the computer took passion for my plight. And the computer automatically auto-corrected. And what came up was not privacy, but plural privacies, I-E-S. And when I saw privacies, quickly two other words were attached to it. And it became a phrase, privacies of life. And when I clicked on that, there were mentions everywhere. What did I learn? The framers didn't think of it as privacy, spatial. They thought of it as privacies of life, spatial and how you choose to live your life in that space, personal autonomy, privacy. Now, having done that research, you would think that I would have paid more attention to the separate opinion of Sonia Sotomayor. Sonia Sotomayor in that same case, United States versus Jones, in that same case, Sonia Sotomayor said, the problem is not how many days they searched with their GPS device. The problem is that they know everything that fellow did for 30 days, everywhere he went. They know where he drank. They know his union membership, if he has one. They know who he saw. They know where he went to be entertained. They know, they know where he ate food. They know everything. It's Orwellian. They tracked him. She said, this is not a spatial privacy case. This is a personal autonomy privacy case. Are we going to allow the government to become Orwell, big brother, tracking people wherever they go? And in a nutshell, that is where John Roberts ends up. He writes an opinion dealing with whether or not you can search a person's smartphone. He writes an opinion whether or not you can search a person's flip cell phone. And then he writes a very important opinion on whether or not you can track someone for nearly four months by taking the data off of a cell tower every time his phone is used and tracking the time when that phone was used and where he was. Yes, you can use that to say every time there was a robbery in a Radio Shack store of cell phones by this gang, Timothy Carpenter was there, so I've tracked and proven that he was one of the members of the gang. But you also know for four months everything he did. And Roberts is using a correct version, I believe, of what the framers intended for the Fourth Amendment. They intended for the Fourth Amendment not to be a general search warrant, a writ of assistance, a general fishing expedition search warrant. But they also intended for it not to violate people's privacies of life. So watch as these cases come forward and understand that that's probably where some justices are going to go. And you have debates over whether or not privacies of life mean what I tell you they mean, or whether they mean something other than that. And we will find all kinds of literature that will be published in the future, which will educate us on this. Just because I'm describing this toolbox means that it can be used in many ways by different, by different technicians and come up with very different results.